everyone, and welcome to a special bonus edition of Drama Orama Online. I'm Mrs. Combs, and I'm so excited to be sharing this time with you today. So, let's get started. Today, we will be building a toy theater. So, what exactly is a toy theater? Toy theater dates back to the early 1800s. Paper kits were purchased and put together, and families entertained one another telling stories with these miniature theaters. We're going to make our own toy theater with materials and objects that you can find around the house. So here's what we're going to need to begin. For our toy theater, we will need a cardboard box, scissors, glue, a ruler, a marker, paper, and a hole punch. I have all my materials gathered and I'm ready to begin. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at my box and see where I want to cut out the stage area. And I think I like the wider end because it'll give more space. And then I'm going to take this piece of paper and this marker, and I'm going to outline around the paper where I want to cut out my stage. So I'm going to set the paper here. It looks centered. I'm going to take my marker and mark it on all three sides. Just like that. And now I'm going to take a pair of scissors and cut out where I marked off the stage area. What I would like is for you to please ask an adult to help you with this step. Okay, now that we have our stage area cut out, let's take a look. Ah, oh, that is so cool. Look at all that space but you could see that the stage floor isn't gonna stay down on its own. So I'm gonna take some glue and I'm gonna put glue at the bottom of the box and on the back of the stage so I know it'll stay secure. It's gonna take some time to dry, so I'm gonna put a book down on the base. There we go. And while it's drying, I'm going to take a short break. I'm back. So let's check on our stage. Let's see. It's really starting to look like a real theater. That's so cool. So the next thing we're going to do is fold down all of these flaps. That'll make the box stronger. Normally, I would glue these flaps down. But to save some time today, I'm not going to glue them down. But you go ahead and do that, okay? Oh no, look at that. This flap is too big. But not to worry, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trace around this arch with my marker. Flip it around. And I'm gonna cut outside the lines I drew with my scissors. So what I want you to do is please ask an adult for help with this next step. Okay, now we're going to fold this down. And again, I would normally glue that in place, but just to save time, we're not gonna do that today. But please go ahead and do that. You know what? We have this extra piece of cardboard and it's about the same size as the stage. So I think maybe we should use that cardboard and make the stage floor a little bit longer. So I'm gonna take some glue and I'm gonna glue the back of this extra piece. All right. <laughs> And then I'm going to attach it to the back of my stage floor. Look at that, a nice big stage space. Now that my theater has really taken shape, 
why don't we take a moment and talk about the different areas of a theater? First, we have the proscenium arch. Say it after me, proscenium arch. Proscenium arch. This area acts like a picture frame where the action can be seen. This area is the stage where performers present or perform for an audience. On either side of the stage are the wings. This space is used for entrances and exits of performers and scenery. The wings are located on stage right and stage left. Stage right is the right side of the stage from the performer's point of view while facing the audience. And stage left is the left side of the stage from the performer's point of view while facing the audience. Next we have upstage, which is the area that's furthest away from the audience, and downstage, which is the area that is closest to the audience. To finish, we're going to create a way to hang a backdrop from a baton. A backdrop is usually made out of canvas and hangs from a baton upstage to help show the setting. A baton is a long metal pipe that is suspended above the stage from which backdrops, curtains, lights, etc. can be hung. We're going to make our baton out of cardboard and our backdrop out of paper. But first we need to create a way to suspend the baton over the stage. I'm going to use my ruler and measure one inch from the upstage wall on one side of the stage. And then from that mark, I'm going to make a mark that is two inches long. Then I'm going to repeat that on the other side. Next, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut a slit that's about one centimeter wide and two inches long down to that mark that we made. But first, I want you to ask an adult for help with this next step. So now I have two slits, one on stage right and one on stage left. But now I need to find a piece of cardboard that's wider than my theater. My theater is 15 inches wide and I found a piece of cardboard that's 18 inches wide and about, oh man, I cut it to be about one or two inches thick. So now I need to attach my backdrop to my batten, so I'm going to use a hole punch and I'm going to punch a hole on one side. Well, that took strength. <laughs> and on the other side, all right. And to hold it on, I'm going to take these fasteners and I'm going to attach my batten or my backdrop to my batten. You don't have to use fasteners. You could use anything from tape to staples to even paper clips. So here is how my backdrop hangs from my batten and how it looks in my theater. Now it's time to put our theater to use. You can leave it as is, or you can decorate it with anything that you have on hand at home. You can use paint, 
glitter, stickers, construction paper, markers, crayons, anything you wish. The possibilities are endless. Now let me show you how I decorated my theater. I painted the stage and walls black like a real theater and used construction paper to decorate the proscenium arch. I also found some extra cardboard and created a sign for my theater to personalize it. Yay! Now I'm ready to put on a show. So I started with a very simple story about a little girl that can't sleep because she's afraid of shadows at night. So what I did was I created her room. I used a paper backdrop and a piece of paper for the floor. And then I used toilet paper rolls for her furniture pieces, her dresser and her bed, and a piece of paper for the linens. And next I created my protagonist, Clara. I used construction paper and marker, cut her out and glued her on the back of cardboard, and then cut that out again, just to make it a stronger puppet. And then I glued her onto the skewer from the back so that she can move easily around the stage. Clara and the Shadow. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Clara that was afraid to sleep at night because she kept seeing shadows. I don't like shadows, they make me so scared. She would see the shadows on the walls. No! She would see the shadows on the floor. Oh, no, 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 get away, get away! And she would also see the shadows creeping towards her bed. I will never leave. My favorite place is hanging out on your wall. That way I can see you and everything around you. Mwah. I have to do something, but what? What could I do to scare the shadow away? Nothing can scare me away. <laughs> I know. I know just the thing. And Clara goes into the hallway looking for what might help her out. And she finds something remarkable. It's a flashlight. No, not a flashlight. I can't exist when there's light flashing on me. Go away, Shadow, and leave me alone forever. No. Finally, the Shadow left her alone. And Clara was able to go to sleep at night with her flashlight by her side. The end. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make a toy theater with me today. Have fun creating all sorts of stories backdrops and set pieces and creating wonderful characters to entertain your family and your friends. See you next time.